Welcome back to the Eight Man Breakdowns podcast. This is where we discuss all phases of the game of football, including philosophy, play concepts, questions, and more. And joining us today is Coach Eric Detweiler. Coach Detweiler is the head coach at Axel High School, and next year he'll be heading into his 10th season. He's coming off of back-to-back state championship seasons, and I actually got the opportunity to work under Coach Detweiler for two years as one of his assistants. I learned a ton, and I continue to bounce ideas off of him to this day. Well, Coach, thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me on. All right, so I know your football background, but for those who don't, just go ahead and share a little bit about your high school days and kind of how you got into coaching. Uh, yeah, I uh, well, I actually went to school in Axel. Um, I actually grew up in a small town uh, north of Axel, about 10 miles in a little town called Summerfield, Kansas, and, and actually that's where I still live today. Um, I actually attended grade school in Summerfield and then they moved the grade school down to Axel. And, and, uh, so then, uh, uh, after that, uh, went to junior high and high school in Axel and, and, uh, you know, went to school there and then fell in love with the game of football and, and, uh, you know, played football there and, and, uh, you know, never made it to a state championship, but, uh, uh, lost in the sub-state finals my senior year and, and, uh, you know, was an all-state player and, and, uh, so just, just love the game of football. <clears throat> I actually uh, farm. Um, you know, I don't actually work at the school at all, so I'm a Rule 10 coach. And and then, you know, about 10 years ago, the, the football opening come open at the school, and, and uh, you know, I applied for it, and, and, you know, something I always dreamed about doing, and, and uh, you know, wondered if I'd be any good at it or anything else. So I applied for the job, and, and me and my buddy, and and uh, we both got the job as a head and assistant, and, and uh, that's kind of how my coaching started. I uh, never – Started as an assistant, just jumped in as a head football coach, never had any coaching experience, just jumped in head first and, and uh, you know, just kind of took it off from there and, and you know, been fortunate enough to win the, the state title the last two seasons. Here, this is a random question. I was taking some notes when you said that because some of that I hadn't necessarily heard, but was there ever like a rivalry growing up between Summerfield and Axtell? Was there Was that such a thing at all? Yeah, you know, not during my, not during my days because – um, you know, Axtell, the high school was in Axtell, but yeah, sure. My, my parents went there and, uh, yeah, they said, absolutely. Since it was so close, it was a huge rival back then, but, uh, you know, never in my experiences as playing, you know, when, when I was younger. And what, what year did you say they went together? You know, I honestly don't know that. But you always went to I high have... school at Axtell though? You know, you I did. Yeah. You didn't do like junior had, they... or nothing through Summerfield? Right. They, yeah. They had grade school, I think K through six. Um, in Summerfield, and then when you went to junior high or high school, that's when you—that's when uh, everybody went to Axel. And you graduated. Say that again. I graduated in 1998. 98. Okay. So jumping back to your high school days once more here, you said you never made it past the sub-state finals. Would you say that was kind of something that motivated you when you got into coaching? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, you know, always, uh, always chase the, the the state ring. You know, the state championship. Uh, I never was fortunate enough to be able to get one of them myself as a player. Um, you know, I know Axel did in 1993, and, and uh, you know, it was something super cool that I thought, uh, uh, you know, only dreams are made of, and, and, you know, never got the opportunity to do that as a player, and, and I thought it'd be, you know, really cool to be able to do that as a coach. Who'd you guys lose to then in that sub-state game? Uh, we lost to Hope in that sub-state game in 1998 against, uh, well, actually a good friend of mine now, Jeff Hostetter. So, Coach, you said you farm full-time. How would you say you balance your school time and farm time or being away from school? Or what would you say that's like, I guess, not being around the kids all day during the school day? Yeah, you know, sometimes that is a little difficult. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know what's going on at school a lot of times. And, and you know, sometimes it's the worst-case scenario when I get to school and I get pulled in the office and something happened during the day or, uh, you know, something like that. But, you know, usually the only way I communicate with the kids is – Obviously, through our cell phones, um, you know, I just got a group uh, a group text that, uh, you know, if I need something from them during the day, I'll just send it. I usually get our whole team on, excuse me, on a couple text messages and, and I'll send it out. And I know a lot of kids can't respond during school, but I know they get the message, um, you know, something I want to do before practice starts or something like that. I'll send out a message, but it's it's difficult. But at the same time, I think the kids enjoy it. You know, they don't get a they don't get to see too much of me. Um, you know, but it, it's difficult, uh, you know, trying to come into school at 3.30. It seems like I got to leave home, uh, you know, around 3 o'clock, 2.45, you know, and, and a lot of times it's really struggled during harvest. You know, in all honesty, a lot of times I'm getting out of the combine. Um, I really, I do my radio interviews in the combine. I do them in the tractor. 
A lot of times I stop what I'm doing. Um, I do my 10 minute radio interview and then I continue to do what I'm doing. Or quite honestly, a lot of times if I'm super busy, I do it the whole time as I'm, as I'm driving through the field or in the combine and, and uh, my radio station guys know that the extra, the extra noises that uh, usually the monitors are giving off in the cab. Why well, it's just a part of it. It's what I do. And, and uh, you know, I asked the, I've asked the radio station guys several times, you know, about it. And they said, no, they eat it up. You know, they, they love it hearing those stuff. Cause it actually, you know, maybe she, you know, makes it more believable that that's truly what I'm doing. So uh, it's kind of got its benefits. It's kind of got its disadvantages. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, sometimes I'm late to practice, um, you know, not very often, but uh, the kids know that, you know, to get dressed, get there, get out in the field and get their stretching done and, and get that done. But it's, it's a part of it. I've been doing it for 10 years now. It's, 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 it's a struggle to quit in the middle of the afternoon. And, and then especially when daylight savings times hit, or if we're playing, like the last couple of years, we've been fortunate to play up till Thanksgiving. Why it's it's pitch dark by the time I get back home, and uh, you know a lot of times I get back in the combine and and I uh, get back in the tractor or truck or whatever I'm doing, and then you know work till late in the evening, and then and then I get to get home and watch game film. So it, it's just something you got to learn to deal with. Um, the kids know how it works. You know everybody around here knows how it works, and and uh, you know it's just something we do, and and it's uh it's how we deal with it, and we've had success with it. Tell us a little bit about this season. Obviously, you guys won state last year uh, and this year, but tell us a little bit about the season itself. Well, you know, this year was a little unique for us. Um, we only graduated two seniors last season. Um, neither was a starter. So we actually brought back all eight starters and then and then uh, joined in, a, you know, brought in a new freshman class that had some really talented kids as well. So, um, you know, we didn't have to start from scratch when it comes to summer workouts or our first few practices. We actually hit the ground running. Um, where I had some new ideas in mind where we got to come in and, and just make our playbook, you know, more in depth. Um, defensively, we could do more more stunting, more defensive, you know, techniques than, than we've ever done in the past. And, and uh, you know, it kind of worked for us. Uh, we played a good team in week one in, in Care Paravelle. And, and uh, you know, our first half was terrible. In fact, I think we might have been losing at halftime which is uh, extremely rare for us. And, and then we come back in the second half and played exceptionally well. And, and then, you know, we kind of took off the ground running from there. So, um, you know, we were 13-0 and, 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 you know, fortunate enough to win back-to-back -back state championships. And, and uh, you know, just it's just, like I said, super fortunate to bring back all eight of our guys. Um, we, we haven't really had, you know, hardly inju any injuries. We had uh, one, one of our starting lineman tour is ACL in our sub-state game in the first half. But other than that, we've been super fortunate not to have too many injuries that <clears throat> we've had to replenish guys because, you know, honestly, our roster is made up of about 18 guys. And, and you know, that's through all four classes. So, uh, you know, you, like any other eight-man school, you don't have a lot of depth. Most eight-man coaches know that or agree with that. I mean, yeah, the, usually every team is one starter injury away from the season being over, you know. Uh because you don't have a somebody quality to put in as a backup. But anyway, what would you say, I guess, obviously you guys won both state titles the last two years, and this team, everybody came back. Would you say this team was, was clearly better than last year's team just from experience-wise alone, or which team was better overall, I guess? Uh, you know, that's that's a great question. Um, I, you know, I would say probably this year's team because, you know, had, like I said, we had more experience, uh, you know, Going to the state championship last, you know, last year and winning it was the first time we'd won it since 1993. Um, I'm sure there were some nerves, um, you know, and, and going into this year's game, I think we felt like we were more calm. We, you know, had more experience. Everybody had been there, done that. And everybody knew we were on the same page. You know, we didn't have, uh, you know, those freshman mistakes, those nervousness, you know, the nervousness that we've had um, in some of our games. And, and uh, you know, I think. You know, sometimes, you know, not winning a state title so long, you kind of, you kind of questioned your whether you know you're capable of doing that. And obviously, this team knew that. So, you know, I think think from the experience side, um, and quite honestly, everybody was you know was bigger, faster, stronger. Um, you know, everybody put on weight, you know, and was was uh, you know hit the weight room hard. So, you know, overall, I would say this year's team was better than last, but you know, I'd say comparable at the end. It's kind of crazy to think about. You said you not you didn't have many freshman mistakes or even nervousness. You know, when when you guys actually had a lot of underclassmen, you know, playing even this year, you only had two or three seniors. How did you kind of get those guys to to be that way, I guess, to be mistake free going in there with limited experience, you know, not making freshman mistakes out there, even as a freshman? What did you do? Right. Yes. So, you know, you're right. We only had three seniors. We had three juniors. 
Um, that's that's our six upperclassmen. The rest are freshmen and sophomores. Um, and, and honestly, I, I think being confident. I try to be. I strive to be confident um, every day in practice, every day in film session, every day that anything that we do. Um, there's a reason that we're trying to teach you what we're what we're doing, and and I think that's because we believe it's right. And I think if if our kids understand that, um, then they grow. You know, not to be nervous, not to be um you know play tentatively you know I, I always tell our guys in the locker room and in, in, in practice every day if if you if you've done your homework if you've watched your game film and you've given 110 percent in practice and literally in everything then you do there's no reason to be nervous at the end of the day if you lose that football game you've gave it all there's literally nothing left that you could have done to won that football game now on the other hand if you if you're the opposite of that and you haven't worked hard in practice. You didn't lift weights in summertime and, you, and throughout school and all that. And the end of the year, when you lose that football game, you're like, yeah, I could have played a little bit better. I could have done this better. But if you really, truly believe that, you, you know, you've prepared yourself for that football game and done everything that you think that is physically possible, listen to your coaches and done that, there's no reason to be nervous. You play confident, play fast. And the kids that play tentatively do not play fast and they play timid and they make mistakes. And so that's one thing that I try to strive is, is uh, play, play smart, play fast, play confident, and know what you're doing because we are the better team, and and you know we've worked harder than you, and and that's you know not, maybe not necessarily true, but I, I, you know, in our minds it is, and quite frankly, I do believe that, but you know, I'm sure in other coaches' minds it isn't that way, but uh, you know, we believe that, and it has kind of worked for us. Talk more about that, like the practice planning that goes into that confidence. Is it? Would you say it's we're going to rep it all day until it's right? Or would you say it's three perfect reps and we're moving on? Uh, I mean, no. kind of just talk about how you practice plan that confidence. Yeah, excuse me there. No, we rep it till it's right. And I know our kids struggle with that. And sometimes my assistant coaches do that too. But we rep it till it's right. Because in my opinion, if you rep it three times and then you come back tomorrow and you do it three more times and you're not doing it right, then, then what's the point? Um, so we stop, we'll rep it until it's right. And then we'll go away from it. And quite frankly, I'll even come, you know, I've got an offensive mind, so quite frankly, we'll even come back to it and we'll run it again. And and I even try to trick my guys. You know, we'll, I'll skip a couple plays, um, and then I'll, I'll come back to it and, and won't even tell them it's coming just to see if they're running it right. So you know, just I've learned that you can you can literally show them on game film, um, and you we can watch another kid do it, literally stand in line and watch another kid do it, and then you think you're going to go to go to a game and and have another kid do it. It don't work that way. You, you literally got to have that each individual kid do it to be successful at it. Um, whether it's you're running your pass routes, your blocking techniques or, or, you know, carrying out fakes or anything like that. So, you know, my opinion, you got to rep, you got to rep the hell out of it. Uh, have every kid that you want to run that do it and have them do it multiple times. And, and that's, you know, that's what works for us. And, and uh, I, you know, I've just seen it too many times a game film. If you don't rep it and you don't get it right, then it, it don't work correctly on game day. So building off of back-to-back -back state championships, kind of a tough question, I guess, maybe, but or maybe it's an obvious question, but what do you look forward to most going into next season? Well, you know, we lose three seniors that uh, were obviously a key part in our, in our uh, you know, state championships. And I think, you know, what I look forward to is, is uh, our team's got to find a new identity. And even though we're losing three guys, why we're going to, you know, as every eight-man team does, you shuffle, you shuffle kids around. And... I think just, you know, trying to, to find out our new identity, I'm kind of looking forward to that, see who's going to step up, um, see what underclassmen are, uh, you know, have worked their tails off in the offseason to make themselves better to to fill those roles that have been voided. Um, you know, and, and not only that, I look for our confidence. I think uh, I want our kids to come in confident, you know, not not cocky, and I know there's a fine line there, but uh, you got to want our kids to come in confident and, and know what they're doing. You know, I look forward to, uh, you know, the kids coming in with excitement to to have that energy and attitude that, uh, you know, we're here to win. Uh, we're not here to lose. And we're going to put forth uh, those little things to make our to make our team better. Uh, you know, I'm harping all the time in practice that it's the little things that win football games. I um, mean, whether it's that downfield block that'll take that 20 to 30 yard run into a touchdown. Um, th those are the little things that win you football games. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to see if our younger classmen have bought in the last couple of years or they're just, you know, <laughs> instead of, you know, talking the talk, are they actually walking the walk to put the reps in to make themselves better? And 
And, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of things that, uh, you know, our excitement brings from coming off the state title to see what kids are, are willing to learn and, and to move up and to step up and, and fill those roles of those three seniors left. So I'm kind of going to change gears here a little bit, talk a little more on the offensive side. But my question is, when did you make the change to go into a spread offense? And you kind of just talk about what went into that decision. You know, why did you switch to a spread offense? You know, when I first started coaching, even when I, when I played, uh, of course, I think when everybody, you know, back when we were playing, it was uh, more a predominant run team. Um, you know, I would say we were probably 90, 10, 80, 20. Um, but, you know, I just, you know, just growing up and watching, you know, college teams and NFL teams play and they throw the ball around. And, you know, I, I think it's more of an exciting game. I think it gets your kids more energetic at playing the game of the game of football, trying to get them out there. You know, not that we really have too many issues with that, but it's more exciting. Um, and, qu and quite honestly, you know, I think the one reason that we that we moved to a spread team was we never had the offensive line or, quite frankly, the defensive line to to run the ball. We couldn't. You know, our offensive starting line was 140, 150 pound kids that were not our most athletic guys, you know, um, that, you know, just couldn't block for more than two seconds, three seconds. So we weren't spread. You know, my idea is like, well, let's get our guys out in space, whether it's, a, you know, put a twin set out there and throw a bubble screen to them, um, you know, just, you know, just all kinds of set, run speed option, get outside, run reverses, you know, get your, get your guys, get your athletes with the ball in space and make it make a one on play. And, and, you know, a lot of times your guys are better than theirs, and, and uh, it's hard to make an open field tackle. If you can make a guy miss, you're gone for a touchdown. Or in smash mouth football, if you ain't got the athletes up front to run the ball, you're you're not, you know, you can't block for three seconds and get four yards of whack and a cloud of dust and go. And, you know, so, you know, it's not my philosophy. It's, it's We've never had the, the, the alignment up until these last couple of years um, to do that. And, and uh, you know, I think it helps our line out. It doesn't wear them out because – Quite frankly, our linemen, you know, they go both ways on the offensive side of the ball. Um, our state, our you know, same starting three on offense go to the same on defense. It doesn't wear them out having to, you know, run every dang play where you can pass block for two seconds. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're trying to get the ball out of our quarterback's hands immediately after he gets it. Um, and so it's just, you know, it's just more of a, it's more of a spread game. It's more of a fun game. It's more of a better game for our, our kids. And and uh, you know, I just, it's we've been successful at it. And, you know, like I said, that's the primary reason is because we couldn't run the ball. And, and uh, you know, we kind of adapted from there. Our passing game, quite frankly, I felt like the last few years has opened our run game. You know, a lot of teams went to a two-man defensive front against us trying to trying to stop our passing game and, and go zone, which kind of opens our run game a little bit up. So, you know, it, it just it works for us. And, and, you know, we've been successful with it. And that's what we're, you know, striving to do. So kind of random question that just came to mind. But, Coach, how many new concepts or plays would you say that you guys implement each week? Yeah, you know, that's a that's a great question. Um, it it kind of depends on the defense that, you know, that, that I'm looking at. If it's something familiar that, you know, another opponent has run, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll go back and see what ran, ran against them and, and uh, run those home plays. But, I, you know, I definitely put in new plays every week. Um, I, I try if I got enough time that I, you know, can really break it down. You know, I, I, I'll put in quite a few plays. Um, sometimes I feel like I don't need to, uh, you know, and, and but other times, I, you know, I definitely feel like, OK, this is definitely going to be off, open and, and, uh, and you know, you know, put a bunch of new ones in. But, you know, I, I don't know if I can come up with a number or not necessarily, but, you know, it's definitely every week that I'm trying to put in new ones. Um, you know, and quite honestly, a lot of times kids are bringing stuff to me and that's what makes our stuff exciting. You know, I got kids that are saying, hey, man, we just seen this on on Monday Night Football last night and. And, uh, you know, you think we can we can put this into an eight man play. And and so, you know, we'll, we'll work on it during practice and, uh, you know, we'll try to throw it in there. And, and you know, and, and, and honestly, I had a kid this year that graduated two years ago that he said, hey, if you don't mind me. I got some plays that I've been kind of working on. And, you know, you care if you try them at practice. And and so I said, yeah, sure. You know, I, if, if I got time, I'll throw them in there. And and so, you know, the one the one kid that told me that it took me a couple of weeks to to put it in there, work on it, practice before I could work it in. And and I stood back and I videotaped that as it worked. And, and uh, you know, it actually looked pretty good in practice. We actually did up running the game and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm always trying to put in new stuff, make our playbook more complex because I just think if you go into, you go into the game and you run the same thing every time and, and you can actually scout for that, you, you know, it's, it, it's kind of, it makes it easier to stop it. 
when you get when you get to a, a team that uh, you know you start running plays that they haven't seen and they have no idea how to how to scout it or stop it, I think it just makes you a better team and and all around a better football or, you know better football offensive mind as well. Absolutely, you know the way I've approached it is I'd rather be good at a lot of things than be great at just one or two things. You know, I mean, why limit yourself? I mean, I definitely feel like you have that same mindset. Or I might have stole it from you, honestly, but because mm-hmm. yeah, what happens when you get to a game? And an opponent, like you said, has you scouted and they know what's coming and then you're out of options. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. And that's awesome that your kids are actually coming up because that just means that they're watching football. I mean, they're learning football and, you know, watching different games and that they actually care about it and they want to do better. And I've, I had kids do that, too. But Right. And I can't remember. I can't remember what we called that Monday night football play. Hey, oh, I remember now. We, you know, we, they, they've seen this play where we, we hand it off. Uh, I think our run, our quarterback hands it off to the running back, kind of like in a zone read look. And he turns around and he hands it to our, our tight end, and he and he runs reverse with the tight end. And then our tight end turns around, and as he's running the reverse, he runs the speed option back the other way. And and we've seen that on Monday Night Football, and one of our kids did it, and so we, we tried it in practice. And it actually looked pretty good, so we were trying to come up with a name with the play, and we couldn't think of anything. Well, this was several years ago, and, you know, uh, Hank Williams used to be the one that sings that song, the prelude, whatever Monday Night Football used to come on. So that was just our play. We called it Hank Williams. So w- we knew we got into the game and we just called Hank Williams and we, you know, we didn't have no formation or anything. Everybody knew the formation and, and we went with it. So yeah, it gets, it gets kids excited about wanting to, you know, wanting to learn, make them better, you know, uh, better football players. Uh, you know, they're, they're studying like, okay, how can, how can we tweak that from 11 man to our eight man game? And, and, you know, do we need to pull this guard? Do we need we need to do this to make it look, um, you know, get a bunch of eye candy in there to, you know, or to, you know, to make it work? Or, you know, okay, now if they're drawing it up like, crap, we don't have enough blockers to make it go. How do we – how can we shift? Do we need to go to an overload? Do we need to move guys around? And it gets kids thinking about that. And if they're thinking about that, then they're thinking about other plays during, you know, during practice and the entire game to make themselves better as well. That's awesome. That was, you guys called it Hank Williams. I – we did. A, I had one play this year. We called uh, called Popeye, and it, it was one of the kids came up with it, um, too. But right. Anyway. So, last question here: just biggest tips or advice for future football coaches? What would you say? Just be all in. Um, you know, believe in what you're doing, and and do your homework. Uh, you know, quite frankly, there's there's a lot of coaches that I coach against that. Um, I don't know if if they've uh, you know or they haven't done their homework. Um, you know, to make them to make them themselves and their football program good. Um, you know, and I can probably use you coach for a great example where, you know, you go right into Stafford and you know, I, I know you're a dedicated man where uh, I mean if you turn your football program around and you know you, you were what eight oh nine oh undefeated and go to your first round playoffs for a long time. But I think a lot of that, you know, a lot of your uh, your football teams are a good indication of what the coach is about or coaching staff is about. And I, you know, if I, if, you know, if I was going to give advice, I'd say be all in and do your homework. Um, you know, don't, don't half-ass it, uh, you know, give your effort to make yourselves good, do the homework to make yourselves better. And, and, uh, you know, if you don't think you can do that, then, then surround yourselves with other coaches that can, or, or, you know, try to learn, go to coaching clinics, um, you know, just like we did, uh, you know, ask questions, you know, you're not going to learn if you don't ask, there's never a dumb question, uh, you know, and, and quite honestly, study film, you know, football is a copycat league. Um, you know, and, you know, we've seen people try to steal our stuff all the time and, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, they, they kind of miss out on the little things will make our plays work. But, you know, just, just, it's like I said, it goes back to a variety of little things that, um, you know, I could just say buy in and, and, you know, and do this, but it's, it's a, it's a mixture of a little things that make your program well and, you know, and be confident in what you're doing. And, and I think you'll be successful. One thing that I know you already said in throughout the interview was. Um, and you might not have said it in the exact words, but was adapting to your players. But you but you talked about that, how you guys, when you switch from the, the more runs heavy style to the spread, you know, because your O-line wasn't, you know, the biggest guys that could run or whatever. So that'd be one other that I know that you definitely use. So, but anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we usually have quarterbacks that can, that can throw the ball, then use that to your advantage. You know, if you've got a speedster that can, um, you know, fly down the field, you know, spread him out, getting the ball, run jet sweeps. Uh, reverses, you know, just whatever you can do to make him, to make him, uh, you know, successful. And, and, you know, like I said, it, it, absolutely, you know, we change offensive and defensive, um, you know, every year according to what, what our guys are capable of doing. And, and you know, we've been successful with that. 
Well, Coach, thanks again for taking the time to come on and do this with me. Really appreciate it, and I know a lot of others do also. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, anytime. I, you know, enjoyed it, and, and uh, always love to uh, love to talk eight man football. So thanks for having me. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Eight Man Breakdowns podcast. If you have a question for me, the best way to reach me is by commenting in the comment section below. If you've learned anything or enjoyed any of these videos, please click subscribe and check out some of my previous videos right here. And thanks for tuning in, guys.